On behalf of the Gedalia Fencer team, we welcome you to tonight's event. Oh my God, there's so many people here. It's wonderful. And happy Rosh Chodesh. But tonight, allow me to add my own catchphrase in the challenging times we face as Jews today. Either you're frozen or you're chosen. Either you freeze in fear or you choose a muna and resilience to become the chosen people that Hashem deemed us to be thousands of years ago. And I can't think of anybody better than give us instructions on exactly how to do that than the Gedalia Fenster. Ladies and gentlemen, Gedalia Fenster. I want, to, I want to thank you for your tremendous support. I want to thank you every single day. The, the amount of support that I get from you guys is incredible. And if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have made this happen. So I want to thank you for your support. It's, de it's definitely a Kiddush Hashem to have a synagogue with 800 people together from all different areas and ethnicities and everything. It's, a, it's a definitely a Kiddush Hashem. And definitely I know that I'm on the right path. Tonight, I want to thank my wife for allowing me to come. It's easier said than done, right? There's a lot of heat that I have to go through in my life. I want to thank my, I want to bless my children, Luni Shmat, my son, and God willing, in the blessing of all call Israel. And God willing, we should, Israel should do what it's got to do. And this should be a night of Netzach. It should be a night of power. It should be a night of power. I'm going to give you guys a lot of stuff tonight. Obviously, we don't do this all the time. To do an event like this is, is, definitely takes a tremendous amount of work. But tonight, we're going to focus on, on a lot of, of Nasev and Ishma energy. We know tonight is, is Rosh Chodesh Sivan. Somehow, the, the, everything aligned that this should be Rosh Chodesh Sivan. And that itself, Rosh Chodesh Sivan, if we understand the, the power of Sivan, if we took Samech Yavan, Samech itself means God's lifting you. He's lifting you in, through Yavan. What does Yavan represent today in our lives? It represents habit. It represents comfort zones. It represents quicksand. When you feel hopeless, you're, connect, you're, you're, you're connected to the energy of Yavan. So today, it's, it's Sivan. It's Samech Yavan. Yavan. And this is exactly what we're trying to do tonight. We're going to talk about a lot, a lot of things. We're going to talk about from the Baal Sulam, etc. But the main thing you have to focus on is breaking pattern. Breaking pattern. You're not a tree. <laughs> we can break patterns. And that's one of the things that we have to believe in. Sometimes we believe we're so stuck in addiction. We're so stuck in this cycle. My marriage is going to look like this forever. My, this is going to be like this forever. You have to break it. Tonight's the night to break it. This is exactly what God's giving you. He's giving you new lungs. Sivan is all about a lung transfusion. Everybody got a lung transfusion tonight. And if we think about it this way, you'll believe it. It's extremely also very, very important that whatever you believe is what you get. So if I don't believe that, that th this energy can help me, it won't happen. So I can say whatever I have to say, but at the end of the day, you guys have to open up your hearts and believe in it also. So it's extremely important. We have to open up our hearts. If I believe something is valuable in heaven, they'll pay me according to what I'll believe. So let's talk about that practicality of Nasev and Ishma. One of the things that God, God gave the Jews was this concept of Nasev and Ishma. First, they, they did, and then they listened. Unfortunately, one of the problems with Jews today is we think way too much. We think way too much. Thinking too much, not so much thinking. <laughs> You're thinking in too much. 99% of the issues that I tell people is they're way too much in their head. Way too much in their head. Too much thinking. To Nasem Nishma is all about completely breaking that cycle. So if you think about what we spoke about, Faith itself, anytime I do something that is above my comfort zone, that is above my rationality, I become a giver. 
I become a giver. Tonight also is the week of Machut. This whole week of Machut is all about faith. It's all about taking responsibility. It's all about breaking the cycle. The Greeks themselves, they purposely said, you could learn all the Torah you want. As long as you're not closer to God, you're not going to change. You're not going to change. They wanted to keep you in a circle in life. Today itself, this is exactly what we have to focus on. You can be, as long as you, you could think your way out of this thing, if it's not God's not helping you through these things today, we have no salvation. So that's one of the things we need to understand. So there's, there's a concept in Kabbalah called thought, speech, and action. There's a concept called thought, speech, and action. Thought, speech, cancels thought, and action, action cancels speech. So just like Nasev and Ishma, which means to take massive action, let's say I'm, I'm in my head. Let's say I'm thinking too much in my head today. I'm way, way, way too thinking. I can say, I can have a thought, I can have a speech, and that speech will cancel the thought. For example, let's say I'm in my head thinking too much, and all of a sudden I said, you know what? Forget the thinking. I'm going to go into thinking. My thinking cancels my thinking. That means pra the practicality of this is we can always go to a higher level to, to fix a level before it. The same thing, if I have an action, it takes care of the speech. I can speak negatively, but if I, the minute I take action, that action cancels speech. So remember this concept. Thought, speech, and action, you don't ha it doesn't have to make sense, is what I'm trying to explain to you. Taking action, we think, oh, it has to make sense for me to take action. It has to make sense for me to get married in 30 days. It has to make sense. Who says it has to make sense? It's completely the opposite. Nasev and Ishma is going above rationality. Going above rationality is what is your, your DNA today. If I would have told you today in my life that any of the things made sense to me, absolutely not. But once I took the action, they ended up making sense. So this is an area where we have to really, really think about what are we doing today? Are we too in our heads? Are we too calculating? Or are we just jumping in? The energy of Nasev and Ishma means, I will do, and then I will ask. And that's basically showing that we're trusting. The minute we become too smart for our own heads, we get stuck. And that's why the word Yavan itself represents quicksand. You get stuck. You get stuck in a circle. Yavan is the same word as Galgal, which means a circle, which means a pattern of negative behavior. And the, the reason why is because we think, oh, I have to figure it out to, to get out of it. No, opposite. The Torah is telling you opposite. You have to take some kind of action. This is why Rabbi Nachman would say many times, the main thing today is not study. The main thing is action. If I'm doing all of this and it's not leading me to action, I have a problem. If I'm learning Shar Bitachon and I'm learning confidence, and next thing you know, some, some Palestinian clown comes up and scares me, then what am I doing? <laughs> It's not going in. The, 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 the Torah has to go in. That's the most important part. Examples of this, because at the end of the day, examples, some ex typical examples. Gemara will tell you, if you're running out of money, what should you do? Give charity. The Gemara tells you, if you have enemies, what should you do? Pray for them. If things go wrong, what does Rabbi Rush tell you? Thank God. <laughs> Think about these things. Does any of this make sense? Because there's the concept of life that the same head that got you in the problem is not going to get you out. The same head that got you into the mess is not going to get you out of the mess. So this is where one of the things that I, re that I came with Rab Nachman's teachings in the Baal Sulam is they teach you you really know nothing. And they teach you as long the, the evil inclination's job is to make you, is to make everything bigger than what it is. But as long as you take some kind of action, you cut the pattern. The minute I give charity when I'm worried about money, it breaks the pattern. And we know the principle in life that one mitzvah will give you another mitzvah. One sin will give you another sin. So our job today is not really to understand why am I here, it's how do I break the pattern? Many couples will tell me, listen, I have a shalom bai problem. I said, no, you have a shalom pattern problem. 
you keep on fighting over the same thing. Break the pattern. Go out to dinner. Go on a vacation. How can I go out on a vacation if I'm fighting? Very simple. Book a vacation and go on vacation. We don't have to understand everything. That's the whole. You need to understand. Spirit, Judaism is not comprehension of everything. Things don't have to be calculated for you to do them. If you live in that world, you're finished. You're finished. Because you, you need to wait for a sunny day for things to change. It's absolutely the opposite. The things I ask myself, how do I get myself out of a bad mood? Let me go into a cold plunge. Let me do something crazy. Never do I get out of a bad mood by thinking. By thinking. By rationalizing. By pointing, who got me into a bad mood? Why am I in a bad mood? You'll find a thousand reasons to be in a bad mood. In Miami, you'll find a hundred reasons. In New York, you'll find 250 reasons to be in a bad mood. <laughs> So that's when I want you to start thinking of Somech, Yavan, Sivan, breaking patterns. And this is why in the addiction field, there's a concept, if you believe you could, you'll get it. If you don't believe, same thing. So the same thing, for example, if you have, an, if you have a pattern of, of controlling things, you have to go in the completely direct, opposite direction and start letting go. The problem itself in life is teaching us what we're doing wrong. That's how, what I say. I, I practically look at my situations in my life. What am I doing? This head got me into it. This head will not get me out of it. I have to go in a complete opposite direction. And this is why it's extremely important that the action itself cancels the speech and the thought. That means we don't have, we, we have to do things. Even our sages tell us, the minute you wake up in the morning, you're forced to think right away. Because if you don't think, you're going to be thinking. What's going to happen to my day today? What's going to happen today? It's forcing you to get out of your head, which is the root of anxiety. Most of anxiety today is we're way, way too much in our heads. For example, people say, Rabbi Nachman says, when you can't pray, what should you do? He says, if you can't pray, you have to st start screaming to God. The, the segula for not praying is screaming. T tell me how that makes sense. Tell me how that makes sense. It makes absolutely no sense. The segula for dealing, they, there was a study that showed that people who had depression, how did they get out of the depression? 25% of them got out of it just by volunteering. Go vo you're depressed? Go volunteer. Go do something for somebody else. It's clearly telling us that when we are self-centered, this is the root problem in everything. Rabbi Nachman tells you when you get rained on, dance in the rain. Don't go inside. Dance in the rain. I would never forget when I was in, in Uman, we were coming back from Moldova. The flight was canceled. You have a, 500 Israelis that are tired, exhausted, and it could have been, forget it, the amount of, because they didn't tell you when you were going to leave. You know what they started doing, all these people? They started dancing around the airport in Moldova. And the minute they started dancing in the airport in Moldova, all of a sudden, the engine got fixed and we got off. The Torah is telling you when you break your pattern, because it's, so, it's such a natural pattern today to get stuck in negativity. Explain to me how Rabbi Nachman was able to break 20 years of decrees. He says, I broke 20 years of decrees. Back in the time, there, was, there, there were Cantonese and they were drafting these kids in the army. And basically, there was a huge decree. And Rabbi Nachman says, what do we need to do? We need to go out and dance and sing. And through that, we will break the decree. Explain to me how that makes any sense. Dancing and clapping is going to break a decree for 20 years. It's because when you're going in the opposite direction of sadness and depression, you are actually becoming a giver. Anytime I break a pattern in my life, and I break my nature, on high, there's also a breaking of nature. That's how it works. If you want something on high, you have to do something below. And when we do something below, when we break our nature below, that breaks our nature on high. The same thing, let's say we judge somebody. What do we need to do? We need to pray for them all of a sudden. We need to understand them. It's basically teaching us every single way in our lives is completely. 
Many people says, you know, I'm too burnt out. I don't want to go on any more dates. I hear you, New York. I hear you. You know what you should do? You should go on five dates. The fact that you don't want to go on a date, you need to now go on five dates. Because the evil inclination's job is to tell you, that's it, it's over, it's finished, depressed. Now you need to go on five dates. On purpose. On purpose. Because you, you're getting stuck in a pattern of negativity that one problem will lead to another problem. And another problem will lead to another problem. The same thing as failure. How many times do people tell you about failure? I can't go into this business again. Failure is teaching you, not only do you have to come back, but you have to come back 10 times stronger. It's not enough to come back from failure to, and prevent and, and fear. You have to come back 10 times stronger. So if you see the pattern that I'm explaining to you, that everything is the opposite of what you're thinking about. And when people are not into the spirituality thing, they have nothing. They have nothing, because what do they have? They have, not, they have their brains, they have rationality, they have data, and they have anxiety and depression at the end of the day. Because they don't know, they can't handle breaking a pattern. Where we are not, we're not connected to nature. We have the power that we could break a pattern. We could, it's, it's an incredible gift if you understood it. The same thing when you worry. What should you worry? You should do the exact opposite of what you should do. The exact opposite. Same thing in life, just th understand this concept. Whatever got you into the problem, you need to do the exact opposite. Our sages tell us that if we do this for 40 days straight, you can actually have a life, break a lifetime pattern. That means if you have a negative habit, which is exactly what Yavan want, which is exactly what the Greeks wanted you to do, they wanted to say, do whatever you want. Just don't learn Torah. Just no, learn Torah, but just don't keep Shabbat. Don't have Rosh Chodesh, and don't have Brit Milah. Why? Because these things have a power of renewal. As they wanted to destroy the renewal. The same thing in our lives today. When we think that everything's finished, we lose the renewal. We lose renewal energy, and we lose everything. And I'm trying to explain to you that the greatest level of knowledge is to understand you know absolutely nothing. And that makes sense. That's the only thing that has made sense to me in my life, is that I know nothing. Because so many things have happened in the opposite direction in my life that I would have never thought of it in a million years. But the question is, is are we letting these blessings in? Do we let these blessings in? Do we, do we ask Hashem? Do we have doors? Do we have vessels, etc.? So now that we're on this topic, why should I be saying thank you for my problems? If we just told you right now that saying thank you for your problems is actually going to solve your life, is going to make you better, is going to get you into the solution, how, why is this happening? There's a concept in life called the, there's an alchemist. What does an alchemist do? An alchemist takes metals and turns it into gold. Right? We heard a great book Paul Coelho, the alchemist, what does an alchemist do? He takes negativity, bad metals, and turns it into gold. What we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be taking all of our problems and turning them into gold. When's the last time you said, you know what? I have so many problems. I'm so excited about recycling them for gold before you took the five medications. When's the last time you said that? When's the last time you said, I, I have so many bad dates that I'm going to make a, a, I'm going to make a trophy out of this. When's the last time you said that? And it sounds completely ridiculous, doesn't it? But it's exactly what you should be doing. It's exactly what you should be doing. The crazy one is not the guy doing it. The crazy one is you. <laughs> the crazy one is how could I not say thank you for this? So what is the, what is this concept of saying thank you for my problems? Now, there's, I'm going to give you a couple principle laws about life. Number one, God cannot stand self-pity. He can't handle it. <laughs> he cannot handle self-pity. The worst thing you could do in life is have self-pity. Because what happens is in life, when you have self-pity, you become a taker. You don't become a giver. There's nothing you have to offer. You'll never do that. Second, 
It's extremely important in life that any time you have a situation in life, like we said, it's this is a very important rule that you need to understand. The light from above comes down undifferentiated. That means God does not change ever. God does not change. It's the person that experiences the, the light differently. For example, when we have a good day or when we have a bad day, it has nothing to do with God. God's light is shining. What you focused on that day, what, you, what energy you put in that day, that has nothing to do with God. How you had your good days and bad days has nothing to do with God. Because it said, the Pesach says, I, God, do not change. So this is forcing us pretty much to say, hey, I need to change it. So anytime something happens in your life, it's extremely one of the most important rules that I can tell you is the minute you judge it, the wrong thing, you lose potential. You lose any possibility, potential of anything good coming out of that. Anytime you're going through a situation and you judge it, automatically you cancel Havaya. You cancel God's name of Havaya. You cancel God's name of potential. You cancel any possibility of anything good coming. Because basically you close the door because of judgment. This is extremely important why we don't judge. We say, I don't know. Right now I'm in surrender mode. Right now, I don't know. But the minute you say, this is bad. Oh, it's bad? Okay, we lose potential. You lost the possibility of any new potential. Because you're judging it based on how you feel about yourself. So think about areas in your life where you said it's bad. Right away, you're stuck with the name Elohim. Nothing can happen. You lose your Vavke. You're just stuck in Elohim. You're stuck in nature. You're stuck in nature. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Because that's a membership in misery. But the minute you say, I don't know, or let's see, or surrender, then possibility happens. Possibility can only happen to you to the extent that you do not judge anything. You go on a bad date. Nothing's bad in life. It's our interpretation. Let's say God declared that you should go on seven bad dates before you should meet your zivug. That's part of the process. In New York, it might be 19 bad dates. We don't know because the way God reveals the world to us is he uses the purpose of the name, the purpose of the name Elohim, which is nature, is to reveal Ahavaya. That means the purpose of a problem that we go through today is to reveal the light of the problem. That's the whole purpose of, of, the, of, the, of the contraction of the tzimtzum. But to the extent that I judge it, I lose possibility. I lose possibility. That's the problem with Amuna. Whether you like Amuna, you don't like Amuna, the problem with Amuna is if you don't have it, you lose potential. How else can you be more positive in a situation when you're saying it's bad? It's impossible. So that's where God allows us to co-create. And he allows us to say, listen, this is the light. You tell me what it is. And we know this from the blessing, from the, from the parsha that says, see today a blessing or a curse. It's up to you. That means you're deciding whether it's a blessing or a curse. It's nothing to do with heaven. How many people spend time, I can't believe God, what God did to me. What did God, God's the same. The light is the same. If you're in the beach and you have, and the, and the sun is shining, and you sit there and put a, an umbrella, that's got nothing to do with God. That has to do with us. So if we don't understand this concept, we get stuck in, in, in we're judging. How many times have we said, how many times you hear the story? I went through this trauma, I got stuck in it. Why did you judge it as bad? Why did you judge it as bad? Why did you say it was bad? Maybe that was a massive learning session. Like, why do you say things are bad? Like, from where are you getting this data from? Okay, I understand Biden is a whole different story. That we can give him a chadish. Okay, that's the one joke. A friend of mine, his name is Rafael, he's a jeweler. 
he, he, he basically he gave me a coin that says, either you win or you learn. You flip the coin. If it lands on win, you won. If not, you learned. That's what life is all about. Either you win or you learned. But don't judge things. So number one, God can't stand self-pity. Number two, God cannot, don't judge it. Don't judge a situation. Number three, if you look at the word ness, ness, which means a miracle, it has also the, 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 the name nisayon, which is a test. And in, those, in the name ness is 110. Okay? 110 is the numerical value of a miracle. How do you get to those two names? It's the name of 65, which represents God's name of Adonut, which means he's the ruler of the world. But it also has the famous name of 45, which is the name of Ma, which is the name of surrender. So if you want the miracle, you need to recognize, you need to surrender to God. You need to throw your thinking away and see it, there's a big picture happening. And I know this is motivational, yes, yes, yes. This is strategy, my friends. This is not motivation. This is called strategies. It's not when you will be tested. It's not if you're going to be tested. It's when you will be tested. And if we're listening to the podcast, I figured out why people listen to the podcast so much in New York, because there's a lot of damn traffic. <laughs> there's a lot of damn traffic. I think I started listening to podcasts of people that I've never even heard of, because I, was in, in the, I couldn't handle it anymore. But I, I get it. Now I understand why Miami doesn't listen to it because there's not so much traffic in Miami. But I, I, get, I get why the podcast is, is successful today. But the name 45 and 65 represent the numerical value of 110. 110 is ness, is miracle. That means you have, to, you have to understand that we are the malchut. If we do not elevate the malchut, then we don't see miracles in life. We elevate the malchut by being grateful, by recognizing there's a bigger picture. And believe me, guys, I can, I'm going to give you another tremendous tool today. But what happens is when you thank Hashem, what ha what's happening? You're taking the metal and you're bringing it, and you're elevating it to gold. Because you're, you're, you're joining both the name of God's the ruler and God is your judgment and din become one. So this is extremely why that when, when I am saying thank you, for my problems, I'm not so much focusing on getting resolved in this. I'm focusing more on connecting. There's another verse that says, make God's will your will, and he will make your will his will. Make his will your will, and he will make your will his will. So basically, God's telling you that if you accept what I give you, and you accept it with joy, I will flip everything around for you in your life. I will flip everything around for you in your life. So saying thank you is the, you have better chances of saying thank you for your problems than hiring a hundred ther therapists to explain to you why it happened to you. You will have, you have a, you have a better chance with the issue out because the purpose of the problem itself had nothing to do with the details of the situation. It had to do with I, God gave you a situation to connect to. Now you have an opportunity to connect to. So when you're connecting, you are, uh, you are now accepting as well. You know, one of the prayers that I say constantly, please God, I want what you want. That means our real prayer should be that we should get to a level that we should be so happy with what God wants. If he wants me to be single right now, I also want to be single right now. If he wants me to do this, I also want this. It doesn't mean you're settling for peanuts, a bankruptcy court. We're not, hand, we're not settling for 10 cents on the dollar in spiritual bankruptcy court. It's where giving, God's giving you an awareness that right now that situation that you want could not be good for you. That's what he's doing to us. So this is why without alignment and without connection, we don't get anything in life. And this is why the Baal Shem Tov says there's really three steps. There's three steps to tackling any problem. The first step is called Hana'a. You have to submission. You have to admit there's a problem. The problem is I am not 
I do not want what God wants. I'm not accepting the situation. If you could start recognizing that that is the, the issue, that you admit that there's a problem there, he'll help you with that. The second step is called Havdalah. Separate yourself from the problem. And the last step, it's called Hamtaka. Sweeten the issue. I'm going to get to these concepts. But if you understand this concept, there's first acceptance, then recognize that this is an opportunity. Separate yourself from the problems. Stay in potential. And then do the work to get you out of the situation and come out better. That means that the purpose of the darkness was to reveal the light. Now I'm going to explain to you all of these concepts. I know this is, there's a lot of information here. I want you to absorb it little by little. Absorb it little by little to get to the real, real point of tonight's class. And, I'm, and this, if you follow this, if you follow this four formulas, you could pretty much solve every issue that you have in your life. I've tested it already. You could solve every issue in your life. Every single issue in your life comes down to one issue. It comes down to intention. Intention is everything. The Baal Sulam wrote an incredible teaching. And he told us there's four types of, of relationships that we have. Four types of relationships with God and people. And you're going to hear from these relationships why things are working and why things are not working. The first type of relationship is the lowest level of relationship. This relationship is receiving to receive. That means I was born with a Yetzirah that all he wants to do is receive. If you think practically today, every single issue that you're depressed, anxious about, etc., is because you didn't receive something. Your expectation became resentment. I expected my husband to be nicer. I expected my wife to be this. I expected this my, to be married by 35. I expected this to that. Every root cause comes down to you had an expectation. Now today we're like, you know what? Do we really want to be married? I want to be single, but I also want to be married. Our intentions are not really 100% today. We like receiving. But at the end of the day, the more you receive, the, the more miserable you will be in life. Because every single problem comes from receivership. And if you come with a, in a relationship in life to receive, I guarantee you, it will end bad. That means the more expectations you had before your marriage, the more miserable you are today. The less expectation, the more appreciation you have, the happier you are. It's the same guy, it's the same woman, but you had this expectation that supposedly this should have happened, or I had an expectation that I should have had this money back then, or I had an expectation I should have this. This stage is a snake consciousness, it's called receiving to receive. This is, is, the less, is the last hay of God's name. This is an area where if you don't do any spiritual work, your net worth is your self-worth. That's all you are as a receiver. What's the second level? Let's say we say, okay, I don't want to live like this because all I'm thinking about is myself. I don't want to live like this. Then I'm going to get to the second level, and that's giving to receive. So, for example, if I tell you, listen, if you say thank you, your problems are going to be resolved. You're just saying thank you because you heard somebody say it. You heard Rabbi Rush write a book. So why would that not work? Because all you're doing it is you're giving to receive. Giving to receive is the second stage. That means you're doing things, but it has some kind of benefit for it. I'm nice to this girl, so et cetera, et cetera. You fill in the blanks. Uh, <laughs> I'm nice to this person because I'm going to get this deal done. I am nice to this person, or I, I, all of a sudden I'll start praying because Gedali told me if I do Tikkun Aklali, I'm going to get married. You have no interest in Tikkun Aklali. You couldn't care about Tikkun Aklali. 
You're just doing it because I told you to do it. You're, you're not interested in connecting. What? All you want to say is, that's why people tell me after the 40 day, okay, where's my gift? What, what am I getting? What am I getting out of this? I said, do another 40 until you realize what you need to do it. Anytime your intention is giving to receive is, unfortunately, it's still higher than the other one, but you're, you're always going to bounce back to receiving to receive. The main intention of giving to, to receive is stop the pain. Stop the pain. I don't want any more pain. If, I, if an addict tells me, I want to be sober, what could I do to be sober? All of a sudden, you end up relapsing. Why? Because you're, you're not asking for a spiritual awakening. You're just asking to stop the pain. So when we are today asking God to stop the pain in one area, you are going to end up getting from giving to receive to receiving to receive. The reason why we have not broken through in that area of our lives is because the intention is only for us. Guys, this is extremely difficult to deal with. It's not easy to admit this, these issues. These issues are real issues. When I say, why is this relationship going wrong? And then you start recognizing, oh my God, you're right. I was giving, but it wasn't giving to give. I was giving to receive. So anytime you are trying to stop any kind of pain, all you're doing is giving to receive. Anytime you say thank you to see miracles, you're not doing it to connect to God. You're doing it because Rabbi Rush told you, and hopefully something happens. That is a very low level of energy. Because you, it's not coming from your heart. So what's going to happen? It won't last too long. You'll go back to the receivership. The Baal Sulam tells us our whole spiritual work is transforming these problems, these giving to receive, from giving, from receiving to giving. That should be the main intention. For example, you tell me on Rosh Hashanah, I got to show up to synagogue. I got to dip a honey in the uh, apple in the tree or whatever, the honey in, the, in the, 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 the apple in the honey. I'm showing up to an event. I'm dipping the honey. What am I giving? What am I giving? Nothing. Am I crowding the king? I'm showing up. I'm just showing up. On, on Passover, you show up. You don't have your head there. You're dipping the matzah. You're breaking it. You're not doing nothing for anybody. You're doing it for yourself. Well, at least to check the box. Are you doing it to connect to God? Are you doing it for consciousness? Absolutely not. So when we do mitzvot, when we do mitzvot today, and we do them with very low energy, we're just giving to receive. We're not, there's, no, there's, no, there's no connection. There's no real heart in the situation. And this is why all the curses came to us when they said, yeah, their lips, they're, they're, they're praying, their lips, they're moving, but their hearts are very far away from me. They're just in the giving to receive. The Gemara tells you you could be learning Torah and your learning Torah could be worthless if it's the wrong intentions. How could that be? How could that be? Because you're just learning to be, argue. The third stage, which is where mo the, 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 is called L'Shem Shemaim. That's giving to give. That's giving to give. That's when you've mastered doing things for the sake of heaven. Okay, when I'm giving to give, I'm giving with no, no, no kind of intention, no kind of reward. I'm doing it because I, I do it because it's the right thing to do, and that's going to ting. So, example, you do your marriage is about giving. If you're giving so you could be left alone, you're not being giving. Many times, we do things as husbands, and we just want to. We want to have a remote control to put the mute button a little bit. So we don't have to hear everything. It's just, just a mute button. Block the pain a little bit. That's not the case. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just being completely honest. You're not really giving. This is why they said, oh, you don't really mean it. Stopping the pain is not giving, guys. Stopping the pain is taking. Anytime your main intention is to stop the pain, you are getting nothing out of it. You're just getting a temporary relief, and it's not going to last. Giving to give is now L'Shem Shemaim. So when I start doing mitzvot and I do them with joy, I am giving my creator pleasure because I'm doing something. And I'm actually, he's getting pleasure. He's getting pleasure. If I'm giving my father joy because I'm doing something. So giving to give 
is where we have to get to. The fourth level is even greater. But if we could master giving to give, you give a donation, you're not concerned if the money's going to come back in this deal or not. You're just giving to give. The fourth, the fourth one is receiving to give. That is when you become partners with God. That's when God takes over, to, takes over you and he uses you to give. So because you became such a giver, you became a partner with God, and then God uses you now to say, you know what? I want to fund this organization, a million dollars. I'm going to make this guy make 10 million, and I know he's going to give a million dollars to this charity. I'm going to be able to help these people out, but I'm going to use her because I'm going to use her because she's going to do the job for me. You're actually getting so much pleasure. You're giving pleasure to God from your receiving because at the end of the day, God wants to give. He wants to give. So when you get to that point of receiving, of, of getting to give, receiving to give, that is an unlimited mindset. There's no limit on what can come to you in your life. Because you are just, the blessings, the blessings are coming through you, not because of you. They're just coming through you not because of you. Then you have no wor problems with worry about money because you're like, I'm partners with God. What do you want? Partners with God. I'm worried about he's not going to give me anymore. He's using me. We have a very immature concept thinking it's us making the money. No, 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 no. It's coming through you. Through you, not because of you. Don't think so much of yourselves. <laughs> it's coming through you. Get out of the way. Get, get your ego out of the way. God can bless you with, with one day he can close your mind, another day he can open up your mind. Get out of the way. It's coming through you. That is when you've mastered this. So if you look at, pre, pre, let's say, for example, let's take this example in many cases in our life. Let's say, for example, we have anxiety in our life, right? And, and a lot of times anxiety is rooted in social comparison, outcome obsession, right? Why do we get anxious? We can't handle it. Fear. Outcome, we're obsessed with the outcome, we're obsessed with, with what we're not, where we are right now, or we're, out, we're obsessed with what people say about us. It's self-centeredness. So let's say all of a sudden you take an anti-anxiety pill. Or let's say you get high on life. You start smoking. Whatever you're doing to get rid of your anxiety. Without the intention of saying, anxiety is teaching me that I don't have trust in God. If I had trust in God, then I wouldn't see these challenges bigger than me. Anxiety is telling me I don't believe I can handle these challenges. So what do you think you need? Clonopin or you need bitachon? What do you think you need? You need trust. You need to strengthen yourself in life. The answer is not to become more self-absorbed and not deal with challenges. The answer is to go in the opposite direction. It's to go in the opposite direction, not to go in the same thing. So as long as so all of a sudden, let's say you work on your bitachon from this anxiety, and all of a sudden, you start learning Bita Hon, you start learning trusting in God, you start strengthening yourself, then all of a sudden, you, God uses you, gives you opportunities to give. Here you go, you're a giver, let me find you a wife. Here you're a giver, let me find you a business so you can give charity from it. But un unless you are focusing on connecting, unless you are focusing on, on the bigger picture, you are just going to get what you get. And it has nothing to do with God. I hate to tell it to you. It has nothing to do with God. It has to do with the fact that your intentions suck. Bottom line, your intentions are not good. It's very hard to recognize you don't have good intentions. But this is why problems come to our lives. We have relationships that show us our intentions are good. Our, guys, our problems today is not so much financial issues. Our problems today are really relationships. This is the biggest issue today, guys. Let's be honest. It's, it's mother-in-laws, husbands, wives. We can't handle giving. We can't handle. We just want to take. So all of a sudden, people come in your life that you have to give, and you have to break your nature. You're like, well, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. I'd rather be single. Anytime you break your nature, anytime you do something that's very difficult for you, you are a giver. Anytime you show up, at 11 o'clock on Shabbat and go to shul, 
You're a taker. What are you doing? You just showed up. When you break your nature, you now give joy to God because you overcome your nature. The same way, if I break my nature and I eat well, I'm giving to my body. I am a giver now to my body. My body's a receiver. If I'm eating terrible food, my body is not, is taking. This is the whole spiritual work that we have to do. It's transforming from receiving to giving. And it's, and it's, it's going to be painful because at the end of the day, we're all born with a receiving to receive. It's in our DNA. Do you understand? It's in our DNA. So nobody tells you this situation. Nobody tells you this in yeshiva. Nobody, you probably never heard of this. Hey, by the way, you know, you have to come in life, you have to become a giver. You go through college, you go through yeshiva, you go through, what? What happened? Nobody told me this. This is not programmed. But the, the, this is what the Baal Sulam taught in the world. It's the Baal Sulam taught. So when we say thank you and, and we, we break our nature, we are now becoming co-creators. Let's say I have a Shalom Bayit issue in my life. Let's say I'm single. And all of a sudden, I want to get married because I don't want to be alone. My intentions are not good. That means I just want to get married. I just don't want to be alone. I'm not interested in giving. I'm not interested in breaking my nature. I'm not interested in forgiving the person. I'm not interested in giving. I'm just interested in not being alone. That's why you're not married. That's why you're not married. That's one of the reasons why our relationships are really, really sour. I can tell you from my own experience. This is the problem. And you have to look, and you have to go under the table, and then you have to ask God to help you, because it's not going to be easy. It's very easy. If you ask people today, what's the majority of the problem today? Relationships? Resentment? Did you ever ask people, what's the majority of the problem today? Too much gratitude. People, people are just, too much gratitude. The people can't handle the, they can't handle the gratitude. What is it like today for a wife to give a nice comment to her husband now today? What is it? It's like a Monsieur, it's a splitting the Red Sea. Break your nature. How many books today you hear on surrendered wife? The surrendered wife. Break your nature. The whole point is you have to break your nature. You have to break your nature. You have to break your mentality today. The same thing with guys. You have to commit. That's, that's your nature. Your nature is to go to Wimble, Wimbledon match every single time you go on a date. Look all over the room. Commit to one woman. But this, this is why God gave us these problems in our life. These problems in our life are not, are not so, so God could punish us, so God could take away from us things, so God could limit us. He's doing it so we could break our nature. He could break our nature. That's, that's the key, and that's how you become a giver. It, it's an unbelievable opportunity. For me to go through a problem today and not worry about it and be, and be positive, I become the greatest giver in the world. For me to go have a problem and worry about it and be upset and stay in bed, what am I doing? I'm just a ta taker. I'm doing my natural default, what the rest of the world would do, and just becoming a taker. So you have to think about this concept. You're about to receive the Torah, which represents in Sivan, which represents new energy, new oxygen. How do we fix our relationships? How do we fix our relationships with God? The easiest way to fix the relationship with God is one way. Whatever you do, put a smile when you do it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Whatever you do, smile. Be happy that you have an opportunity to do it. Celebrate what you do. And you know what you do? Now God gets pleasure from you. But when you go in there like, you know, like the, the, like the Nick game, after a Nick game, you fish a behav, and we do things with no heart and no mind, it's, it's sort of insulting God that he gave you the Torah and you're just, you're, you don't even, you don't value it. Again, we're not here to judge, but we need to understand that this is really, really the main work in our lives. And guess what, guess what Rabbi Ru says? Praying is giving. If we have somebody in our lives that's not doing well, that's struggling, our nature is to judge. Judge. Judge them. Throw them under the bus. Your, your job is to break your nature and pray for them. Understand them and pray for them. I'm just trying to explain to you. 
when you do this, you are now a co-creator. And that is one of the greatest gifts that we have, is to be able to transform. And if we understand, this is what the Baal Sulam says, from your sad, when you are not given happiness, is so you can attain happiness. You understand? The fact that you are not given something is so you can create a desire to eventually get it. But when I am given something and I don't do nothing with it, and I just said, okay, this is what I'm given in heaven, you're just becoming a taker. And, and between you and me, guys, you know nobody wants to hang out with takers. Because at the end of the day, even if you give them everything, it's never enough. It's never enough. You, nobody's running to, to pick up a phone call of a taker. You know, let's, oh, just who I want to speak to. Why? Because they, 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 they drain you out. They drain you. They, they suck your energy out of you. Why? Because they're not aligned. But a giver, it's the opposite. When we do this and we all become givers, we all lift each other. And the more we lift each other, the more unity, the more peace we have, the more our enemies get blazed. But when we become takers, think about what happened after October 7th. I know we have a survivor here from October 7th. May Hashem bless him. How long did that energy last of unconditional giving to give? Two weeks? Three weeks? Everybody felt like, like something was in the air? And then back? Back to politics. Back to egos. Back to taking. Back to control. Even after something like that, you could see how the evil inclination loves this. Three weeks? That's all we had? Three freaking weeks is all we had on something like this to be united? It's, I mean, <laughs> that's a bigger wake-up call than anything. Three weeks, that's all we have? You get hit with, it, with something like this? In our lives, we get hit with major catastrophes, and we still, all we have is three weeks of, of stamina? What, what does it say about us as a nation? Until we do this work of spiritual work, unfortunately, we get what we get. So think about relationships. Think about when you're dating. Think about your, get your intentions the right way. Can I go give to this person? Can I make this person greater? You know, the number one question people ask you, what do I do if somebody's more religious than the other one? Should I just get a divorce? It's a very common question. No. You are more spiritual. You have more to give. Did you pray for them? <laughs> or did you judge them? So what's the point of being spiritual? If you're, if, you're, if you're just to say you're better? So your intentions are off. Your intentions are off. We have to fix our intentions. And then we need to put attention to the right thing. Intention, attention. That's what God wants. He wants kavana. He wants intention. He's not interested in this lip service. He's not interested in going through the motions. He's not interested in doing things without a mind and a heart. And this is why, if you think about having a Muna, having a Muna today is the work, is giving, is the work of the mind. That means today, practically, how do I become a giver to God? The more faith I have in Him. Because when I have faith in Him, you know what I do? I open up my vessels and I allow him to give to me. How do you fix the work of the, of the heart? Your relationships with people. The amount, the amount of mercy that you have with people. So the mind and the heart today is really, really where our struggles are, is where the work is today. You could be a very nice person. You can give everybody the benefit of the doubt. You can be a, give a giver, but you could not have faith. So you'll be a giver, but you'll, you'll, you'll be blocked in your mind. Mind is, is completely going na sevrishma, being positive for absolutely no reason, dancing in the rain, whether, who, do, who cares who caused the rain, whether the rain, dancing in problems. And this is how you relieve, relieve how you do the work of the mind. And the, and the work of the heart is your relationships with people, giving people the benefit of the doubt, forgiving them. For giving them. This is the work of the heart. When we do these two works, unstoppable. Unstoppable, no limit mindset. When we don't do this work, 
we become just like everybody else. You lose your superpowers. You know, we always told our kids, if you do this, you're going to lose your superpower. You lose the godliness in you. So may Hashem bless everybody here that we should all transform to become givers. Okay, guys, God bless everybody. Hashem should bless everybody. Be strong and be curious. <laughs>